teams in America, twice in Lake Placid, Squaw Valley. But Squaw Valley did not have a bobsled track. So once again, Squaw Valley did not have a bobsled track. And then, of course, here, the site of the 19th Winter Olympic Games in 2002. Will the games come back here? Mm, we'll see. We'll see. The big push is for Salt Lake City, 2030, 2034. And they had uh, bidding, not necessarily bidding with a price tag, but bidding between ourselves in Utah.
this is the first of the two corridors that I mentioned before. The corridors are getting uh, utilized to check the quality of the ice, which we know after the track record is in beautiful condition. We check timing and scoring to make sure all the officials are in place. We'll set it aside and we'll just have a brief break, a minute or so, maybe two minutes or so, then we'll set our second form on Then we'll prepare for our competition of 12 sleds. The pace between the sleds is just over two minutes. The track is clear, but the bobsled start for forerunner number two. So the track for the bobsled start. This is our second and final four runner. Now back to the sleds. The athletes and the sled are weight as one. We cannot exceed the maximum amount. I don't want to give you too much information, but it's roughly just under 1,400 uh, 1400 pounds. So there's a scale to finish. So once the athletes cross the finish line, they put their sled on their scabbards to protect those delicate runners. The athletes and the sled are weight as one. There's a minimum weight of the sled, and of course a maximum weight of the sled. This is a gravity game. Even the temperature of the runners are checked to make sure that the runners are heated to reduce the friction when the sled comes down the track. The runners are wiped down to make sure they have to put on a foreign substance on those runners. Reduce the friction, making their sled faster. Four runner number two has crossed the finish line.
Second stop on the BMW IBSF bobsleigh and skeleton World Cup Tour in Park City, Utah, the venue for the 2002 Winter Olympic Games. And a welcome return to sliding in North America started last week in Whistler, continues here at Park City. We haven't been at this track for five long seasons. When we did, it was a series of double four-man weekends held at Park City. So, in fact, the two-man race yesterday was the first since 2013 on this track. It's a short start ramp. You don't run it too far or you come out to the spurs on the run into turn one. Start record, Martin Annan, uh, Silvio Schaffelberger, Bert Hefty and Cedric Grant set in the Winter Olympic Games in 2002. Corner four, first critical corner. Get that wrong and you're wrong down into five and six. And then you have no speed at all down through Albert's Alley. This four corner complex, seven, eight here, nine and corner 10. 10 to 11, little airborne into 11 there. So that gets very light and then holding down the speed into corner 12 and 13. Corner 14. The last downhill element, then you come uphill into corner 15. Mistakes there, and there are often mistakes there, cost you a lot. Across the line, Andre Langer, Lars Berendt, Rene Hopper, and Karsten Embach set the track record in February 2001. That record wasn't even beaten on Olympic ice with Olympic sleds and Olympic athletes. So that is a very long standing record. Francesco Friedrich, the winner of the first four-man race of the season, is our World Cup points leader from silver medalist Brad Hall. And Taylor Austin of Canada, who took the bronze in Whistler last week. And he will be hoping that his North American track experience helps him to a similar sort of performance here this weekend. Well, the ice temperature continues to drop. It was minus five this morning for the women's bobsleigh and is now down to minus six. Air temperature dropping down towards freezing again as well. But it's a dry cold, Martin. Uh -huh. Runner will be at just under 12 degrees and all the other runners will be measured. They have to be within plus or minus two degrees of that to make sure that people aren't heating their runners to reduce friction by melting the ice. No coatings allowed on the runners either. And they're all made from a controlled billet of steel that is uh, handed to the teams by the IBSF to try and ensure that there's no uh, huge leaps in runner technology distancing the field. And talking of our field, well, we start with a welcome back to the fold for Jeff Godwa at the USA, who didn't race last weekend in Whistler. He was here doing North America's Cup racing. Francesco Friedrich goes off two, Brad Hall off four, Taylor Austin off at five. Those were the medalists last week, but we could see a lot of changes going on here. And a welcome to the World Cup as well to Adam Dobesh of the Czech Republic, his first start as a driver. The track is clear. Race two of the BMW IBSF uh, four-man bobsleigh World Cup. And Jeff Gabwa of the USA makes his eighth World Cup appearance in four-man. His last was in January 21 in Koenigsegg, Bavaria. Three newbies on the team at two. Freddie Harris, 36-year-old. His only ever bobsleigh race was in the four-man NAC here last week. Quentin Willie at three and Darius Joseph at four did NAC two and four man last week and started the two man yesterday. So a very fresh crew behind Jeff Gabwa. 5 0 6 is the getaway. Gabwa knows this track well. US teams have been using this as well as Lake Placid over the last few seasons. Since its opening, obviously in 2001, but particularly in the last couple of seasons. 116.8 kilometers an hour, that translates as 79 miles an hour. These big four bangers are absolutely flying down this track. Big skid there, though, from Gabwa. That's 10 to 11. 133 at the bottom. 138, 139.5 kilometers an hour. He breaks the beam at 47.72 seconds. That is 1.65, uh, 1.15 away from the uh, track record, which is a 46.57. Track records fell in men and women's skeleton, were established in the monobob, but the and the uh, women's bobsleigh didn't manage. Uh, they broke the, the uh, finish record, didn't break the start record, but no records broken in the two-man. 
Again, you can see the newness of the crew there. Freddie Harris, Quentin Willey and Darius Joseph all making their World Cup debut. And between the, two, uh, the three of them, they have a total of seven race starts of any kind. So it is an, when we talk about a brand new crew, it is an absolutely brand new crew, not just new to each other, but new to the sport. The opposite end of the experience spectrum, 74th World Cup start in a four-man alone for Francesco Frutic, our Olympic champion, our world champion, our World Cup champion, and last year's race, uh, last week's race winner. However, second in the junior worlds in 2011, his only medal on this track. He's never taken a World Cup medal in the four man. He won yesterday in the two man. Today, four and two all get away. He's a big star from this crew. Alex, you're on the back. He's done 24 man start all with Francesco. Best speed so far. This will be the benchmark. 80.4 compared to 79.1 of Gabois. Eight tenths up. This will be a second clear at the line. Little late flop and a rub on the wall. No big skids. And across the line. 9,800s, 46.74. Okay, 2,300s away from the track record. Well, he improved yesterday between heat one and heat two by over four tenths of a second. It is possible. They go hunting not just for gold, but for records this crew as well. Big historian of the sport, Francesco Friedrich. And look at the well-drilled way this foursome drops in. Nice exit out of corner 10. And just allows the sled to make its way onto 11. The only notifiable drama there, really. The exit of 14, just a fraction later than he would have liked. I'm sure he will tidy that up. Good first run from Francesco Friedrich. Looking for World Cup win number 24 in the four-man. Third of our starters is Austria's Marcus Treichel, 36th four-man World Cup for the 29-year-old. He has not raced here before in his career. Sasha Stepan at two, 11th four-man World Cup for him. Marcus Sammer at three, hasn't raced since the Winter Games, but this is his 53rd four-man World Cup race. And Christian Huber, his 22nd. All three guys behind Marcus Dreichel, previously raced with Benny Meyer. Marcus Sammer's second ever World Cup was on this track in 2012 when we started in Lake Placid and went the other way round to North America. And that was with Benny as well. Let's see what they got on the start. 4.89, just 500s away from Friedrich's coup. That's very good starting. So Marcus has all the giddy up that he needs at the start. And the art of bobsledding to quote Woody from Toy Story, is just falling with style. Second best speed. What's the gap looking like at the 10-11 split? 1500s back. That is super competitive with Francesco Friedrich by the midway mark. 1800s back. If he can be within two tenths of Friedrich, Marcus Treichel might be knocking on the door of the medal. Fifth place in Whistler, 2400s back. Yes. No wonder Wolfie is looking happy with that coach Wolfgang Stamfer. 46.98, well, unless Friedrich has dropped the ball enormously, and those things don't happen all the time. They do happen occasionally, but not all the time. That was the Austrian for 2-6. Again, really experienced crew this. They haven't spent a lot of time behind Marcus Treichel. But they've spent a lot of time together, and that shows. Dropping in at two there, Sasha Stepan, last man to sit down. Look nice from 10 to 11, no dramas there. 14 to 15, didn't have the late flop, avoids the touch with the wall, carries the speed uphill to the line. Yeah, there's a big smile under his helmet there, isn't there? 
smile as well from Sasha Stepan. Brad Hall of Great Britain, his fourth career silver medal in the four-man last week. He was silver behind Francesco yesterday in the two-man. Aaron Gulliver makes his second World Cup start. Big T, Taylor Lawrence, his 18th, and Greg Cackett, a landmark 30th four-man World Cup start for the man at the back. 41st four-man World Cup start for Brad Hall, the driver. Led Friedrich by 1500s yesterday. Friedrich found an enormous turn of speed in the second heat. 485. Not often this crew is outstarted. Little bump from two to three. Neat, smooth arc through corner four. 800s back. Brad Hall has already, in the last couple of weeks, established himself as the biggest thorn in the side of the Germans. Whoa, little meandering there from corner 10, but held it well. Third best speed, 1,200s back, 1,800s back. Losing more speed than he would like, Brad. Good exit, tiny tap with the wall. Second or third at the line, should be second at the line, is second at the line, but 2,300s back. He'll be disappointed to be a little more adrift. 100 the head of Marcus Trichel. Got work to do in the second heat. Take a look here, that little snag on the wall early on in the run. Just send him a little late out of corner 10. Having to try and keep it off the wall into 11. And at this level, when you're trying to beat Friedrich, you are seeking perfection in everything. It is hard to accomplish. Francesco Friedrich leads from Brad Hall and Marcus Trichel as we get to our fifth sled in the field. Third World Cup start for Canada's Taylor Austin. His debut was in San Moritz at the end of last season. That was a, a limber up for the Winter Games. Finished in the bronze medal position in Whistler, his second ever World Cup four-man start. At the back there in the shades, you can see Lyndon Rush. In the front, you can see another man with plenty of... Uh, Justin Cripps in the shades, Lyndon Rush uh, with his back to us. Justin Cripps, silver medalist the last time we were here in one of the two four-man races. Lyndon Rush, the winner in the 2009-10 season. Pre Olympic race here. 4.99 get away. Good start for Taylor Austin with Cyrus Gray, debutante in the sled. 29 year old David Cachero and Shaq Murray Lawrence on the back. A little bit more rocking and rolling than Taylor Austin would have hoped for, I think, early on in the run. Still second best speed. That is very good news for the Canadian. Top three speed, only the fourth fastest start. They are fourth on the splits at the moment. Can he find a little bit more? Very high, very, very high. Somebody's hood billowing at the back. That'll be a fraction of drag. 47-3-9, a slightly worrying moments there at high speed at the bottom of the track. So Shaq at the back, hanging on to the brakes before making sure everyone's got the sled before he lets go. Is he getting out there a little gingerly? No, looks like he's okay. Uh, I think I know what we're about to see here. This is 11 to 12. Woof! Right, I see the sparks! Right up in the woodwork. Good work in the truck for highlighting that. Now you can see the hood at the back, Shaquille Murray Lawrence. They always try and either wear the hood over their head or tuck them in down the back of their suit so they're not dragging a parachute behind them. Francesco Friedrich, the leader, after our first five sleds. Switzerland Seaman Friedli is the sixth starter, race two of the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup here in Salt Lake City. Greg Jones at two, Andreas Haas at three, Roman Fagli at four, the new boy in the crew in his second World Cup start. 
A fresh face bunch, aren't they? Eighth World Cup four man for Greg Jones. 11th time in the four bangers for Andreas Haas. And it's his 13th start as a driver, Seaman Friedley. Took a silver medal in 2016 with Rico Peter, one of just three drivers in the field who have been on the podium, but that time it was not as a driver, it was as the foreman at the back with Rico Peter, who is coaching him here. Eighth in Samaritz in 2021 remains his World Cup best in a four-man sled. Finished in ninth place in Whistler last week. Ooh, a little skid from three into four. Fourth best start, 4-9-0. Six best speed. And again, a little more rocking and rolling than he would like as well. Track is hyper fast here. And don't forget these drivers that are new to the track and Friedley is among them as a driver have six training runs over two days in which to get used to the four-man and the two-man. And because we're now doing training over two days rather than three, it tends to be that you do two-man one day and four-man the next. So three training runs to learn the track that you then tackle at near fastest ever pace. So 47-32 at the bottom. That leaves him in fourth place, off the fourth place start, but again, a little uncomfortable in the load. You can see the sled skating around down into turn one. So it bumps into turn one. Woo, and again, late off here. 11 to 12, one of the trickiest transitions on this track. Very easy to be late and hard on to 12. As we saw from Taylor Austin shooting straight up to the woodwork. So smile on Seaman Friedley's face. Well, he currently lies in third, uh, in fourth place. A smidge behind Marcus Trichel. What about his teammate Cedric Follador with Nicola Mariani, Dominic Huschmidt, and Kantan Giar, who made his World Cup debut in two man yesterday. They ran it almost to turn two. They were so deep down to turn one. 494 and more control from the driver there being able to load a little earlier with the four man but again on the left going into corner four so the two three sequence did not work well for him and he's lost a lot of ground already fifth best speed part of his battle of course will be with Francesco Friedrich, Brad Hall and the rest the other part which you might argue perhaps the more relevant part, given there'll be an equal machinery or similar machinery, will be against his teammate, Seaman Friedley and Mikel Vogt. 47-39, he is behind Friedley, tied with Taylor Austin, only 700s behind Seaman Friedley. Cedric Follador. Who <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's all very breathless here at 2,000 metres above sea level. The highest ice track that exists. Out of 10, you can see he was a little early coming down and he's paying the price for it as the back tries to walk away behind him. In the end, wasn't too bad. On to 11, but came off late. Rocking and rolling, skidding, almost pitching it onto corner 12. Not a comfortable ride for those behind the driver. A World Cup debutante as a driver, Adam Debesh. Raced here in two and four man in the NAC over the last couple of weeks. It's his third season of driving. Behind him, Mikhail Debesh, no relation. His second four man World Cup start. He and Andre Radil at three made their debut in Samaritz with Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic and Dominic Zaleski, he was in the two-man and, like Adam Dobesh, started in 2017 as a brakeman and then went away and he came back this season. Dobesh was learning to drive thereafter. 
Sarah Dubesh with just two World Cup starts in four man as a brakeman back in 2017. Now making his driving debut, five flat. If he completes both heats, it will be a top 10, a top 12 finish on his debut as there are 12 sleds in the field. He's been here for two weeks. Last weekend they were racing at double four man, the weekend before double two man in North America's Cup. So he's dialed himself into the track as he's got quicker and quicker. And that is great news for him, seventh best speed. Seventh place on the splits. Whoa, long skid. Still seventh best speed and at the line, eighth place, just a fraction behind Jeff Godbois. Well, it was going well for him there, down to corner 14. And off 14, coming out with a big skid. That will have taken several tenths of a second out of his time. At that stage, he was looking to put himself in eighth place ahead, or seventh place ahead of Jeff Gabois, but slipped behind. Doing what he was doing all last week. But again, new to this track as a driver, one week's experience in a four-man. And you look at the top of the pile, Francesco Friedrich was driving here in four-man in 2011. Next up for Switzerland, Mikel Vogt, Silvio Weber, Cyril Bieri makes his first World Cup start of the season, and Sandro Michel, good to see Cyril back in a sled. 27th four-man start for Mikel Vogt, who was fourth last week in Whistler. Most experienced man in the crew, Sandro Michel, 20th World Cup start for him in the four-man. Done an awful lot of two-man races with this driver as well. 4.92, good strong start from the Swiss athletes. That's fifth fastest speed, uh, fifth fastest start. Good exit velocity as well. Second best speed. This is a good run from Mikkel Vogt. Disappointed to miss out on the medals in Whistler last week. Still a top four run, but from the fifth best start, he is closing on the top three. 2400s back in third place at the line is Marcus Treichel. And Mikel Vogt will be very close indeed. Fourth best speed, fourth place. And he is, what's that, 800s out of the medals. On the right hand side, you saw Rico Peda. Bronze medalist here in the first race in the 2015-16, and then bronze medalist in the second race in 2015-16. Seaman Friedley on the back of one of those sleds. Braul van der Zijder made up the foursome in the other one. Well, Mikkel Vogt could be the next Swiss to snatch a medal here. I'm just going to put a bit of a commentator's curse actually uh, unintentionally I think on Marcus Treichel because I cannot see an Austrian medal in four man on this track let's see what the uh, second runs bring until then though we have three more sleds Frank Del Duca for the USA eighth in Whistler last week first time driving a World Cup four man here 16th World Car start, his fourth as a driver. Adrian Adams at two, 31st four-man World Cup race for him. Manio Mitchell, second four-man World Cup race for the 4x400 silver medalist from London 2012. And the 24th four-man World Cup start for Hakim Abdul Sabur at the back. Number four in the sled, number one in the hearts of our social media team. Let's see what they can get at the start. 490s low would be good. 488, that is a big, big push from this crew. And that is the advantage of putting a brakeman on the front. They've got this 
unusual looking US development sled that's been driven for the last couple of seasons. There's plenty of room for the athlete. It clearly works in the wind tunnel. And third best speed, it seems to correlate in real life as well. He's lost a little bit of that. 18th best, third best start. He's in fourth on the splits. This should be a top six run for Frank Del Duca. Fourth World Cup start as a driver and across the line, top five. Yes, all right, says Brian Scheimer. Absolutely all right. 47-1-0. He's ahead of Seaman Friedley. He's ahead of last week's bronze medalist Taylor Austin. He's ahead of his teammate Jeff Gabois, who is ninth place. Let's take a look at the cohesion at the start. Adrian Adams at two will be the last man seated, although he's the first man in behind the driver because you sit between the legs of the guy behind you. So four has to wrap his legs in, so three can do the same, so two can sit down. And again, from 10 to 11, look at that. To the man aboard, Frank Del Duca. That was a decent one. And Del Duca is top five behind Friedrich Hall, Treichel and Vogt. And a good battle on again for the medals. Two sleds to go, among whom the last man to win on this track, Johannes Lochner. Then, that is race one in, uh, he was, uh, uh, okay, Nico Valtor was the last man in this field to win on this track. With Christopher Weber, Mark Rademacher and Christian Rasp. The only difference to the team is that Christian Rasp is at the back, but Eric Bruckert at two. He was on the two man last week. And Georg Fleischauer at three, 46th four-man start in his World Cup career for Hansi. Former four-man world champion and a 4.83. That is a monster start from this crew. Now, Nico Valter was the last man to win here in a four-man race with Kevin Kuska, Christian Poser and Eric Franke. But Hansi won the first race in our last appearance here with the double four-man weekend. In fact, he's the only driver still competing in the field to have won in a four-man on this track, unbelievably. Nice looking run so far. He is behind Friedrich, but not by much. This could be close. 1800s back, 46-92. Be a little happier than that than he was with his first run in the two man for sure. Again, look at the crew Eric Brookett and Georg Fleischer, very new to Hansi's crew. They've only done a handful of four man races each. Christian, Christian Rasp on the back is the veteran holding it all together. 43rd four man World Cup start for him, only three fewer than the driver. And out of 10 to 11, just urging the sled over to the driver's right onto 11, rather than actually steering it. There's a big smile from Hansi Lochner, Christian Rust there in the background. And our final sled in the first heat. Christoph Harfer didn't complete last week's race. The brakes failed at the end of the first run. They went up the out ramp and across the car park. The sled wasn't badly damaged. It's all back together and they're racing it again with Mikael Sanson, Matthias Sommer and Tobias Schneider, the crew. But Harfa has not raced on this track before. 16th four-man start for him. For him. Yet to claim the four-man World Cup medal. Looked, looked, in this way, like this way, like the back here before. before. Fifth best speed, only 500s behind the leader. It's a German 1 2 at the moment. Brad Hall, Marcus Dreichel, Mikkel Vogt, and Frank Del Duca are the top half dozen behind Friedrich and Lochner. Third best speed for Harfa, but he's lost speed now. 1400s. 
This is a top two run right now, maybe top three off the fifth best start. Wants to bounce back after that disappointment that was not his fault. Third best at the line, 46-94. Two hundreds behind Johannes Lochner and two tenths behind Francesco Friedrich. That is the way to bounce back from the disappointment of last week. Well, the three men behind this driver with only 26 four-man World Cup starts in total across the three of them, still relatively new, but loading like a well-oiled machine and a very fast start as well for Christoph Harfer. And he drove really nicely. It's a German one, two, three, and Harfer only 200 behind Lochner for silver. Two fourth place finishes, the best for Christoph Harfer. For our race leader, though, a track where he has never won in anything for man, Francesco Friedrich is the leader. 23 World Cup golds as of Whistler. Can he make it 24? Well, there are mistakes to be cleared up there. He's 1800s ahead of second, two tenths ahead of third, and you feel that there is more in the tank for Friedrich. So look at the gap. Lochner, Harfer, Hall, Free, uh, Trichel. Maybe even Mikhail Vogt could get in there. He's only 1200s off Harfer. There could be some sort outs in the second uh, heat. And Frankie Del Duca, only 400s behind Vogt. Could be a top six, could be a top five. Who knows? Seaman Friedley, just ahead of the tie between Taylor Austin and Cedric Follador. And Jeff Gabba and Adam Dobesh, the rookie, will need to tidy up in the second heat to try and make some ground on the sleds in front of them. So that is the first of our two runs down here in Park City. Don't forget you can join us for the second and deciding heat. That will be live at three local. That is six Eastern and 2200 Greenwich Mean Time, 10 p.m. this Friday, Saturday evening. We'll see you then for all the highlights to see if anybody can break the German domination of the podium.